I had a very unorthodox education. I was homeschooled, but the method of homeschooling I received was actually closer to something called unschooling. I was raised on books and reading. My mom read aloud to me and my three siblings books about history, geography, science, and economics, an activity I took part in as a baby sitting on her lap as she read to my older siblings, all the way through my senior year of high school. She read my siblings and I the first few Harry Potter books as bedtime stories, so when I say I was raised on Harry Potter, I really mean it. We also played the piano, ran around outside, and raised butterflies. And every day we were supposed to sit ourselves down for an hour of DIRT, which is an acronym for Daily Independent Reading Time. We kept book lists of everything we read starting in 2003 when I was about 9. I have over 700 books on the list from 2003 through graduation, though remembering how much I disliked keeping track of the books I read and how infrequently I would add to the list, I would estimate I've read over a thousand books in my lifetime. I was a very self-motivated reader. I got impatient with my reading lesson book about two-thirds of the way through and started reading books on my own. When I was really young, I read a lot of Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, The Boxcar Children, The Littles, Junie B. Jones, American Girl Doll books, Captain Underpants, books about missionaries, and Tintin. I read so much Tintin growing up. We owned 24 Tintin books, and I've read them all several times. I reread books all the time, but looking back at my book list, Tintin is on there more than anything else. The single book that I've read the most is one that's still my favorite book to this day, Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine. It's not the most literary of books, but it still manages to hold my top spot. I think this is definitely because I read it at least six times between 2003 and 2012, and that's only counting the times I remembered to write it down. It's like it's woven itself to me through time, and rereading it makes me feel whole and connected to myself. My love of that book has stuck with me these past ten years, and because of this reading history I have with the book, it will stick with me for many more. I was part of a literary tea group with some other homeschooled girls and their mothers for many, many years. One of the books we read for that group is called Roxaboxen, and it's about these kids who build a play town called Roxaboxen in the desert by their town. I love that book so much I started a similar town in the forest in my backyard with my neighbor kids and tried to run it like the town mayor in the book had. In middle school, I did a book club called Lunch and Lit at my library with other homeschoolers. Some of the books I read for that club are still among my favorites today. Books like A Single Shard, Maniac McGee, The Westing Game, Surviving the Apple Whites, Stargirl, The Giver. I first read the Harry Potter books 1 through 5 on my own at age 9. I love those books so much. If I'm going by my list of favorites, they currently hold the second spot. They really encompassed my entire childhood, which again says something for the bonds formed with books read and reread over many years. They were important to me. Right before the last book came out, I reread them all again. Book 7, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, was the first and is so far the only book to make me cry. It was my freshman year of high school when I first read the A Series of Unfortunate Events books, and I found them delightfully melancholy and beautiful. They currently hold their place as my third favorite books. One of my biggest regrets about my reading history is not reading them earlier on, because I missed out on forming those bonds with them during childhood that I have with Harry Potter and Ella Enchanted. Similarly, it was the summer before my sophomore year when I read the entire Chronicles of Narnia books for the first time, which, growing up in a conservative homeschool circles as I did, is rather embarrassing and not something I like to admit to those crowds. The Three Musketeers by Alexandre Dumas was the first big classic book I read. I had to take it in 10 page chunks, but carrying it around to read at church and play practices, everybody thought I was really intelligent. The Goose Girl by Shannon Hale brought me back out of a huge reading slump in high school, and I remember slacking off on schoolwork for a day so I could finish it. I started reading ebooks on my tiny iPod screen junior year. I read The Picture of Dorian Gray, Phantasmagoria, and other poems, the complete works of Emily Dickinson, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass, and Lame as a Rob, which is by far the longest and most impressive book I have ever read. Junior year, I also took a British classics class. We read Macbeth, Pride and Prejudice, Sherlock Holmes stories, Jane Eyre, The Man Who Was Thursday, The Fellowship of the Ring, Paralandra, and Tale of Two Cities, which was the first book I really properly underlined in. I started reading more for fun again and discovered some new books that quickly found their place among my favorites. The Book Thief by Marcus Susick, The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman, Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne-Jones, I also started reading more by C.S. Lewis, who is now my favorite author. 
His book, Mere Christianity, really impacted me, helping me realize what really was at the core of what I believe, and saying it all with really insightful examples that spoke to my creative spirit. His analogy about God existing outside of our timeline as an author exists outside of the timeline of the books they write really changed the way I look at life and God and literature. In spring of 2012, I read Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card, which blew my mind for some reason, and I had an insatiable desire to share my thoughts about the book with someone, so I started a YouTube channel and filmed myself talking about it. That's where my booktubing journey began. For the sake of my new YouTube channel and my own literacy, I did a 25 book summer challenge making reviews for every book I read. It was intense and even exhausting at times, but I came out more well read on the other side. Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger really surprised me in an excellent way. I read The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank for the first time and I loved it. I also really loved East of Eden by John Steinbeck. During the challenge, I also realized that certain classics, regardless of their renown, are not for me, such as The Old Man in the Sea and Wuthering Heights. I went off to college and came to decide that I'm not really a fan of ancient literature like the Iliad and the Aeneid, but I do like ancient plays such as Oedipus and Medea. I read aloud most of Beowulf to my roommate and had a story hour with some of my friends in which we took turns reading from Norton Jester's children's novel, The Phantom Tollbooth. I added English as a second major to my creative writing one. From looking at my book list, I discovered I first read Peter Pan in May of 2003. It's that book, along with its author, J.M. Barry, that I've chosen to study in depth this next semester for a class I'm taking entitled Effective Writing in Bibliography and Research. And while I'm terrified to take this class, I'm really excited to learn more about this piece of fiction which is at heart a children's novel and yet still holds its place as a significant literary work. And looking at the character of Peter Pan, I think what a shame it is that I had to grow up. But at least I grew up reading, and that is one of the best gifts my parents could have ever given me. And to them, I say thank you. And to you, I say, that's my reading history. What's yours? <laughs>